Super Smash Bros. on Switch is still just a giant, fiery ball of mystery, but we do know now that it is coming in 2018. Two new characters have already been revealed in the form of Breath of the Wild Link and of course the Inkling Squids, but I'm pretty certain that the new characters will not stop there. One constant you can see with every new Smash Brothers game is quite a lot of Pokemon. And in fact, in every new Smash Brothers game, there's been at least one new Pokemon introduced as a playable character. And even if they haven't survived up to the latest version, there's still quite a few of them in every single game. Because of this fact, I've already begun to brainstorm some of the best choices that could make an appearance in Super Smash Bros. Switch. Generations 4 and 5 are probably my two least favorite Pokemon generations, and that's largely because of the massive amount of legendaries in both of them. Almost half of the now existing legendaries in Gen 7 were introduced in these generations, and it started to make legendary Pokemon feel less lucrative and more like just a regular regular Pokemon. Regardless of my feelings about that though, there were some hidden gems amongst the sea of giant fairy dragon monsters, with my favorites being the forces of nature. Landorus is the leader of this legendary trio, and it would be a very cool pick for Smash Bros. Switch. Through the use of a looking glass, Landorus can change between two forms, his normal incarnate form and the Therian form. Being able to switch between the two could make for a really cool mechanic, allowing him to be a slower moving, technical zoning fighter in his incarnate form, or a faster moving physical attacker in the Therian form. Because Landorus is probably the least recognizable Pokemon on this list, I'd say he's probably the least likely to be in a Smash game, but his unique ground and flying type, as well as the ability to switch between those two stances, I think he would just be a really interesting addition to this roster. Pikachu will forever be the face of the Pokemon company. In every game, in every movie, and on almost every piece of Pokemon merchandise there is, there's bound to be a Pikachu somewhere in there, and it's also spawned quite a few different Pikachu lookalikes. Following the introduction of Pichu in the Gold and Silver games, the baby character was included as a playable fighter in Super Smash Bros. Melee on the GameCube just a year or two later. Then, following the introduction of Cosplay Pikachu in the X and Y main series games, the Cosplay Pikachu Libre was introduced in the fighting game Pokémon Tournament just a year or two after that. Mimikyu is the latest in this long line of Pikachu clones and has also become one of the most beloved characters from Generation 7, which is why I think he's definitely going to see a spot in Super Smash Bros. Switch. There's been no ghost Pokemon in Smash Bros, which is really a shame because their attacks look so cool, as proven by Gengar and Pokémon, and Mimikyu could prove this even further with his awesome looking Shadow Claw that he has in the anime, as well as some cool fairy type moves as well. Mimikyu also features the unique ability Disguise, which can completely tank the first hit that he receives in a main series Pokemon game battle. I'm not 100% sure how they could implement this in a fighting game, like maybe there's a shield that completely eats an attack every 20 seconds and then comes back every 20 seconds or so, but it could definitely make for an interesting mechanic no matter how they do it, and also just a very unique fighter overall. The concept of characters with different stances hasn't really been explored in Smash Bros as of yet. Shulk is able to change his stats around through five different arts, and of course Kirby has his copy ability, but that's about the extent of different stances in the current game. Aegislash is a ghost Pokemon that can switch between a blade and shield form, boosting either his attack or defense. This Pokemon was recently introduced to Pokémon Tournament in its first DLC pack, where you can sort of get an idea of what this character might just feel like in Smash. Just like my Landorus idea, Aegislash could switch between a defensive, ranged, zoning character in shield form, then fluidly switch to the more aggressive, up-close blade form. Aegislash might not be the most popular Pokemon out there, but his introduction in Pokémon definitely increases his notoriety tenfold, which makes me think he's an actual, likely candidate for Smash Bros. Switch. In almost every generation of Pokemon, there tends to be one starter that outshines the rest. I can't think of one starter design that's 
particularly bad necessarily, but in the cases of Pokemon like Charizard, Blaziken, Infernape, or Greninja, these are just obviously the starters that have become the most beloved from their respective generations. It might be a little too early in Sun and Moon's life cycle to pick out which starter is going to be the poster child of that generation looking back, but it's starting to become pretty clear to me that Decidueye is the obvious choice here. I actually ended up with Incineroar in my personal playthrough of these games, and while I think Incineroar could make a perfect fighting game character, his moves are honestly just too obvious and similar to other fighting game characters for him to be a really cool choice in my opinion. Decidueye's incredibly unique design in which he can attack with his wings, his internal bow, or also just grass type moves in general give him very new possibilities for a fighter unlike anything else in the existing game. There's also the fact that there's a fire starter and now a water starter with Greninja but still no grass starter after Ivysaur was scrapped in Smash 4. I think Sceptile would also make a pretty cool choice here, but seeing as Decidueye has a more unique design and also is just more relevant at this point in time, being in the current generation and Pokemon tournament already, I think it's a no-brainer that Decidueye be added to this roster. If you've watched my channel before, you might know that I put out a list of 5 Pokemon that I think should be in Pokemon Tournament about 6 months ago. I really tried to avoid putting any of those same Pokemon on this list, but Tapu Koko is just one pipe dream that I couldn't let go of. The 4 Guardian Deities of Alola were some of my favorite Pokemon from Sun and Moon, and Tapu Koko is the first we met as well as the one with the most personality. Tapu Koko could be a medium weight, quick, all around fighter with some heavy hitting physical moves from his shell, a good zoning fairy type or electric type ranged ability, and of course some type of electric dash similar to Pikachu's. They could also implement his unique electric surge ability that could maybe boost his attacks for the first 20 or 30 seconds of the game just like it boosts his electric attacks for the first 5 turns in the main series games. The way Tapu Koko just bounces around while he stands idle in the main series games really makes it look like this character was just made for fighting games, and his interactions with Ash in the Sun and Moon anime has cemented him as one of the favorite legendaries from Generation 7. I can definitely see the Smash Bros team trying to squeeze in a new legendary to match Mewtwo, and Tapu Koko could be one of the most popular picks to fill that spot. Now I know that there's probably hundreds of other Pokemon that I should have picked here, but these are just my personal top 5 that I'd like to see, so please take it with a grain of salt. I hope you agreed with me at least some of the way. I think my personal favorite runner-up that I was considering would have to be Zeraora. Um, I've seen a couple other videos about this, which is why I didn't put it in my video. But uh, this is an unreleased mythical Pokemon. It's supposed to be like an event Pokemon. I was kind of expecting it to come out for the Pokemon Day, uh, which is uh, the third, I believe. Uh, it, Pokemon Day what just passed. It was like a couple weeks ago. Um, I was expecting it to come out then. It's kind of like a mystery Pokemon, but it's an electric type, and it looks very much like it could be in a fighting game. Um, it might also be in the next Pokemon movie, so that would be another big reason for them to put it in a game. You never know. That was my favorite runner-up. Just wanted to put that at the end here. Uh, let me know your top five down in the comments if you have one. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This has been Max from Max Culture, and thank you so much for watching.